Hi, welcome back to Close Up. Uh, we have our guest this week, Minister Faust. And how's it going so far? I believe that the full awesome weight of your brilliance has caused this program to transcend beyond human potential. And that's good, right? This is, this, it's, an, it's probably the finest moment in not just human history, but the history of the universe. And that's good. I want to know, how do you see God? What is God to you? Well, it was very tempting with these kind of questions to give some kind of a glib answer. Um, I'd be okay with that. <laughs> because, uh, because the question's so huge and because I think everybody is, so, is rendered so tiny in the face of, of even the question, let alone the attempt to put together an answer. So all I can do is say that I have a You've totally... spent more time prefacing than I've, most I've, people do well, answering. I think, I think one should approach these things with uncertainty and, and with doubt because um, the greatest crimes in history have been, have been perpetrated as a result of absolute certainty. So, um, and while I don't think that religion is the cause of war, I think that, uh, that it is a great pretext. It has become a great pretext, unfortunately. But what is God? Who is God? To you. Just to me, to you. yeah. So you can't be wrong, you, you can't be right. Well, we can all be wrong. In fact, probably we all are, I would say. I don't think that I am. <laughs> I, did, I did see your, your, your very beautiful God decoder ring that you, you took it off for the interview. But it was quite, <laughs> quite spectacular. Well, I would, I believe uh, that, uh, and first of all, I would like to say if God exists, because I don't claim that I can prove that. In fact, I would say anybody who claims they can prove that is, uh, is deluded. Um, I believe that God is the uh, intelligence that is responsible for forming uh, the universe. Now, beyond that, I don't have any strong uh, opinions. I used to believe, I used to assume that this intelligence was, uh, was benign. Um, I will separate what I hope to be true from what I can tell you I think I have good proof for, or even good reason. I hope God is benign and is all loving. And when I pray, I, I, I appeal to a creator who I believe is benign and loving. But you, I, you gave me a huge if. Yes. And then almost in the same sentence, yes. you said, so when I pray. Yes. Well, because, you know, there's what you feel in your gut, which is different from what you say that you can actually reasonably come up with a solid argument for. And I was raised to believe in God, and I would say that the number one pe reason that people believe in God is because they, be they started out in life believing in God. I mean, that, that's, that's how it works. The number one reason people don't believe in God is because they started out in life not believing in God. Why you believe is very different from why you should believe. And for a lot of us, it's we're just, we're just rolling along doing what we were doing to begin with. You know, I mean, I think if folks are going to be really honest, they'll have to concede. If they were born into a Baptist family, they probably stuck. And if they were born mm -hmm. into a Theravada Buddhist family, they probably stuck. And that's how it generally works. But, you know, people, people ask themselves, you know, well, why, why, you know, angry atheists, which is not all atheists, there's some great atheists, but they say, well, why would God... There's some really cute atheists, too. <laughs> I'm a married man, so I'm not going to get into that. But, uh, but you you got to admit that. Sure, why not? Anyway, um... You know, they say, why would God allow so much suffering? And I say, well, first of all, you're assuming that God is benign. I mean, if God weren't benign, then that suffering would be perfectly legit. And, uh, you know, for, for such a God. And it's also strange because many people, if, if they look honestly at their scriptures, their scriptures say really horrible things about what God is. Well, like what? I don't want to. I don't want to take shots at anybody's in particular. But I'll give you. Give me, a, give me an give, example. I'll give you, you a can't general just, statement. You I'll give, can't you, throw I'll give that. you a general example. Give examples. me a specific. Okay. Come on. Give me a. Give me one. Lear. Any any examples of God smiting? All right, destroying people, burning them up. Oh, I know. One time he did, when the Ark of the Covenant tipped over, and the one guy went to grab it, and uh, then he killed thousands because that guy stopped it from hitting the ground, and you weren't allowed to touch it. 
Sure, there you go. That was tough. <laughs> All right, that but was I, a tough I just moment. want to point out, you're taking this example. I don't want anybody to feel that I'm cr trying to take a shot at their faith tradition. Thanks for leading me towards that example, though. Well, you, you, you know, you, that's for you to discuss with your personal spiritual advisor. I will. I'm not taking any blame for that particular one. But any of the... And it's not the Minister Faust. They're, so. they're found in, in many religious scriptures that, uh, that say essentially that, you know, God is petty and jealous and cruel and vindictive. And I think, well, you know, if we found these qualities in any person, we probably wouldn't walk up to this person and say, I want to worship you. We would probably get our distance from this person because we say, well, these are terrible qualities. So, <laughs> so why would we attribute them to God? Well, there's a very simple reason. In the past, when human society was more vicious and cruel and uh, didn't have constitutions and guarantees of human rights and so forth, which even today are hardly guarantees, but we're better than we were. So when you pray, Yes. Who do you pray to? Well, I was raised to use the word God. It's a comfortable word. It's a word that, that has an immediate emotional connection. Uh, but I don't think that people should really get too hung up in, in how syllables, you know, I, I mean, you know, really, I mean, if you're the creator of the universe, uh, I mean, do you really care what accent somebody has? You know, do you really care what phrase they use? I mean, that's, that would strike me as, it's pretty hard to, to, to believe that. So I pray to God. I use the word God because I'm used to Sometimes I say the creator or master. Um, and, uh, and I believe, like I say, there's a difference between what I, what I hope is true and what I could come up with a really strong argument in favor of. But I, I, I hope that this is a benign being who, um, who has ultimately a, um, well, you know, to use, to use an old phrase, a, a master plan that makes sense of so much of the suffering. So, um, so your gut and heart kind of leads you to say, yeah, maybe there's a God? Well, my gut or and heart says, per, like some my gut and heart says most of the time there is a universal creator who actually has, uh, you know, what, like the closest human word we would say would be love. But really, I mean, when you're a child, for instance, you might say you love candy and you get to be older and hopefully a little bit smarter and you realize, well, that wasn't really love that you had for candy. Your, your understanding of emotions is much more sophisticated. Now, if you could create the universe, your emotional range and depth would be far more sophisticated than what we have. So we attribute human qualities to God, but whatever God is, if God exists, is far, far greater than that. And I, and I think that maybe uh, perhaps it's scary or perhaps it's comforting. I tried to understand when I was a teen, well, how can God allow for genocide. I mean, of the numerous examples of genocide and holocausts there have been just in the 20th century alone, you know, beginning mm -hmm. with the end of the 19th century with the murder of 8 to 10 million Congolese by the Belgians. Horrible, horrible crimes. And I thought, how can, how can God allow this? How can this be possible? What justice can there be? And the only thing that I can think of, and this is my weak, pathetic attempt to make sense of this, is that, is that on the cosmic scale, if you pull back from what we call good and evil, uh, it looks like a totally different thing from God's standpoint. And that if you were, imagine for a moment that you were a, like a, an actual chemical acid, well, your enemy in the universe would be all chemical bases. It's your opposite number. You'll destroy each other. You, you, you nailed me with that one. <laughs> <laughs> because you're an acid. And, I've always and, felt. And your, your boss is a base or something <laughs> like that, yeah. So, you know, you, you, uh, you, know, you look at that at a, from on a, a microscope and you don't have a moral or an emotional connection to acids mm -hmm. and bases duking it out. Well, maybe on, on, the, on the cosmic level of God, what we call good and evil, it, it, it just makes sense from a scientific standpoint. And all of that suffering and misery is resolved in a universal consciousness that, that has forgiveness in it because ultimately we are all connected. The murderer and the murder victim are the same life inside of God. And, and I want to ask you about that too, about kind of the whole, kind of the Eastern thought of there is no winner between good and evil versus a Western thought, goodness must triumph. Right. But um, I'm getting hungry. Yes. Uh, and there's this great restaurant that I know you know. Yes, that's right. So why don't we go to it through the miracle of television. And then we'll, next time we show up on screen we'll be we'll be there and the drive will only have taken us you know two minutes and 30 seconds worth of diapers a mere commercial break yes it's phenomenal you know what's great having minister faust on the show he's smooth 
That's me. Smooth. Like menthol. Or butter. Mm. You mean butter? No, butter. <laughs> My mother demonstrated that, you know, you could help. You couldn't, you couldn't change the past, but you could change the present and thereby the future.